Uh, you know, similar to uh, the last few months, today, here we are once again, uh, talking to some of the brightest and some of the sharpest uh, minds when it comes uh, to entrepreneurship and business acumen in our country. Well, the economy has uh, slowly started to pick up the pieces and get back to some level or some semblance of normalcy. Some businesses have done well, where others have uh, crumpled under the stress of COVID-19. We are here to talk about ideas. We are here to talk about uh, some of the innovations. We are here to talk about success stories. We are also here to talk about some of uh, you know, the failures that perhaps might inspire you to start afresh. And every time uh, we are on this platform, there's something new that comes our way, which in fact uh, brightens the prospect that our country needs at this point in time. It's not only about new beginnings here, uh, it's also about uh, some of the endings which have inspired us to make uh, new starts as well. So without further ado, let me introduce the panel for today. Uh, joining me on the platform is Mr. Pankaj Gode. He's the co-founder and CEO of uh, Agri10X. Captain uh, Shaji Kumar, he's the CMD of Astute Outsourcing Services. Mr. Deepak Mittal, co-founder and CEO of uh, To The New. Ms. Kruti Sate, uh, founder of uh, The Lair. It's a barber shop in Kar. And last but not the least, my partner in crime, Dr. Anurag Batra, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief of uh, Business World and Exchange for Media Group. Uh, in fact, uh, Deepak, let me start by asking you this uh, pertinent question. In fact, it's pertinent because of the fact that uh, you have uh, prospered during the lockdown. Yours is one of the businesses which has done well. And it was, so to speak, just like the Hollywood movie, a serendipity. You were not expecting it to happen. It is something that fell in your lap. Uh, you know, there are a lot, lot of people like you, uh, you know, who have, in fact, uh, leveraged the opportunity of the lockdown. But unfortunately, there are a lot of other people who have, in fact, been uh, completely ravaged uh, you know, by uh, the lockdown. Obviously, I want to start with you because yours is a success story, which is not only inspirational, but it also brings about the perspective that uh, adversity can be converted into prosperity. Yep. All right. Um, thank you, Vineet. So, of course, we have been one of the businesses. We are a digital transformation services company, and we work for ISVs, consumer internet, and enterprises across the world. We have customers in 30 countries, and we work on cutting edge technologies to basically digitally transform the businesses. Because of the nature of the work that we were doing, and it was primarily being delivered offshore already, and uh, we were working on some of the trends and in some of the industries which have actually benefited from this whole COVID situation, such as online education, online entertainment, uh, patient doctor engagement platforms, customer engagement platforms. Now, these are some of the things that we were already working for for many years. And we were in cloud space, cybersecurity space. And we were just, as you said, we were, it was just serendipitous that we ended up benefiting from the whole situation. Obviously, we didn't realize when the COVID situation arrived, everybody was overreacting and nobody knew how it is going to pan out. So we we saw our customers overreacting, cutting down budgets, asking for longer payment terms or, you know, just, um, you know, reduction in the reduction in the team size and this and that. But once people realize that, okay, it's going to be, it's here to stay, and uh, they saw an opportunity. Some of the businesses actually saw an opportunity in this particular pandemic, and they started increasing their spend. They realized that you know going cloud is very imp very much important. Cybersecurity became more important than ever. So some of the things that we were already doing became more important, more relevant in the new world, and that ended up helping us because we're a services company. We help customers adapt. Uh, digitally or make themselves more digitally, you know, make, uh, you know, kind of uh, benefit from the digital opportunity. So, yes, you're right that we ended up benefiting from this situation. But one thing that I would like to add here is that, like, no, these were all the trends which were already happening and they just got accelerated because of this. So yeah. I didn't see, personally didn't find any new things that started. They were all the things that we were already doing and the businesses already had on their mind. Deepak, I just want to ask that if a mid-sized company, let's say five to $10 million of turnover spending between three to 8% on technology, has that spend gone up? Uh, give us a sense of how the spends on technology and digital transformation have grown? Sure. That's an excellent question, Anurag. So 
for a small size companies let's say you said 5 to 10 million dollars of revenue for them it's a little bit challenging to be honest generally speaking because they want to you know make sure that they are saving for the rainy day and they don't know how, until when it is going to last but some of the larger companies have actually seen the opportunity and they have increased their spend in technology that's a very general statement and but it varies across industry to industry now if you are now we have some customers who are smaller in size but they are in online education space they have actually increased their spending they have raised funds and have increased their spending but let's say not so in other industries okay now let me go to kruti kruti uh, the lockdown economy has also become a do it yourself economy we all have uh, uh, for sometimes the right reasons not visited a saloon or a barber shop and we've used you know tools in our home to be able to groom ourselves uh, tell us uh, uh, how's been the business in your store and have you started to see volumes come back like they were pre covid um so okay let's start with um, you know because we just started in march and we were open for basically like uh, two to one and a half weeks before the lockdown was in full effect and everything just completely shut down so i don't necessarily have you know a baseline that i can compare the lairs uh, the uh, client tell to and uh, you know numbers too but you know from friends that i have in the industry who have been op- operating salons for 20 plus years in bombay um at least in like july and august their numbers were 10 what they were last year so right while a lot of people you know they just um, figured that this is not uh, an essential activity and they can deal with like overgrown hair and overgrown beard and stuff for a while and just do it themselves um what uh, i'm seeing now especially like last year i mean last month because of diwali and um the uh, you know season. Our, the, the wedding, wedding. season too. <laughs> yes the wedding season and also i think uh, uh the fact that restaurants opened up that kind of like jump started people's social lives a little bit uh, for now i think most companies have already mandated work from home for at least mid next year that means that you know what used to be where people used to even uh, ones who are not um, you know as freaked out and as scared by covid Uh, where they would go out for their grooming services in like hard four weeks now it's gone up to like six or seven weeks or even longer in some cases um uh, so i don't i mean uh, especially my, maybe like you know november was relatively better if we could december might still continue with that trend but like as soon as 2021 and, hits we're expecting us to why why another saloon and a barber shop what is your you know story what made you start this um okay so i'm just going to uh, talk about you know what we're trying to do with the lair uh, one is i'm um, you know we're trying to bring back what barber shops used to stand for when they were first introduced from what i hear and you know uh, from what i've read like when barber shops uh, uh, when people started going to barber shops it was as much about the fraternity gathering as it was about the services it was a safe space where men come together and you know like they talk or debate or gossip about businesses and sports and politics and they can let down their guard and maybe once in a while if you're open for it and you know if you're lucky like you land up you know making a friend or a business connection or something like that so with the lair we don't just have services it's not um, you know it's not an errand that you're going to run like the minute you enter there's you know like a sort of table we have like a dinner where um, and there's free coffee and uh, you know a bunch of different things so uh, especially in march now not so much like people still come in with their friends but uh, more often than not i got get calls that you know they want to be the only person in the space and like we can do it because we're anyway like you know kind of tiny um but uh, yeah so you know it's like this communal space where like uh, uh, there have been instances where people you end up community you know, space changing. you mean yeah. community space okay. community space yes uh, so they end up you know just so like saying, making connections going and, to a barber shop must be an experience and not an errand and that's what you're trying to do with the lair let me get to pankaj pankaj uh, the last four weeks have been about the agriculture economy they've been about the farmers they've been about the prime minister's dream to build a fork to farm farm to fork economy and uh, the three bills that came in parliament have come under criticism from farmers first of all do you see uh, some merit in what the farmers are saying or uh, you know you feel that uh, they are just being threatened by change give us a sense of what you feel because you know this domain really well well sir uh, my personal observation and uh, probably input would be that uh, the farmer should be happy with the bills uh, one 
uh, I think it's important that we change the route and we also allow that route to uh, transform to a next digital way. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying the bill has a, a wrong impact or a right impact, but personally, I would say from an organization perspective also, for our farmers, this particular three bills that have been come in, uh, I think it's excellent and will change a lot of dimension in the agriculture as a sector. Right. And Pankaj, the, the fact is that, uh, you know, the MSP and the APMC uh, account for only a certain percentage of the farmers using this facility. Uh, you know, if it's a 30 lakh crore industry, only 6 lakh crores is uh, routed through the APMC and the MSP. Uh, do you think that uh, this is uh, uh, something which is going to benefit the farmers in terms of the corporatization, which is being said, uh, will have a negative impact on the farmers? Or is it something which is, in fact, going to benefit the farmers, uh, you know, uh, keeping out the Adanis and the Ambanis uh, uh, out of the equation? But, you know, I think uh, corporates will play a large role uh, in facilitating the right infrastructure at a farm gate to these farmers. Today, I would like to just give you a one small example or a use case. We, the farmer used to sell a pomegranate in a Pandapur area at a price of 60 to 70 rupees. Today on a digital platform, they have been able to sell at a price of 140 to 150 rupees kg. I think doubling the farmer, what we've been speaking in the post-harvest management is something that has been able to achieve because of the digital transformation. Having said, if, corporate, if, if the corporate comes in and if there's a large buying that will take place and if there is a transparency without having this middleman, I think the farmer will still get a lot more benefits than the what benefits they used to get with a Mandi and APMC. Does this impact your business? How does this impact what you're working towards? Does this have any impact on what you're doing? Does it make your I, life I think we've, we've increased our top line. A lot of farmers have come forward to see this digital mechanism is working. They don't really necessarily have to go to Mandi and APMC, put money towards logistics or a transport or to a labor, uh, you know, there are a lot of challenges when the farmer takes material from his farm gate to Mandi. However, in our case, we directly go to Mandi, uh, we, we directly go to farm gate and pick up the material so that the farmer also gets a one rupee extra or a two rupee extra compared to Mandi. And he also gets an instant payment. Whereas in Mandi, he gets a payment only after 30 days or a 45 days time. So that's the change what we are bringing into farmers' life. And Pankaj, if you had to look ahead, building on Vinny's question on how it has impacted your business, if you had to look at 2021, what would be your top three predictions from the farm sector? I would say uh, more and more farmers will come forward to uh, use the digital platform, one. Second, they will look at more of a farm gate infrastructure where they will have a dependency on government. Third, definitely there will be a demand and supply kind of a growth or demand and supply kind of a ratio, which will, which will have a prediction in the industry. And with that prediction, the farming sector will have a you know, penetration more. I think these three things will drive the sector well. And you know, if you had to, if you were in the government and you were kind of trying to engage with the farmers, what do you think the government should do? Because you clearly, as a somebody who's in the thick of things and who's who believes that you know farm bills are good and you can help the farmers get a better yield for their crops, uh, what do you think the government should do to get the farmers on board? I think more communication, more uh, uh, small uh, engagement with the farmers, making them understand how beneficial this will be. Uh, largely, if you look at policies are good, but if till these policies do not reach to a level of a grassroots, I think this policy will not be driven in a right format. One. Second, if you look at from an impact perspective from these policies, will not come in now because agriculture as a sector takes nine to ten months time to actually get it into a post-harvest management. So I would say post-2021, the policy format will showcase a result. And I think from a government perspective, they should more communicate with farmer as a community, create more, uh, you know, compared to community-driven, it should be a network-driven kind of activity. And so if I may say the old, old world artyas are being replaced by platforms like yours, which are more progressive which enable and share the spoils of what you enable. So we'll come back to you, but let me bring Mr. Kumar in. Mr. Kumar, the future of work has changed. Uh, the future of workplaces has changed. You know, our workplace, we need to doing this from his home. I'm doing this from a hotel room. Uh, you know, so clearly, uh, you know, work from anywhere has changed the nature of how businesses operate and what are 
what is the traditional office facility? Tell us how has that impacted your business? Uh, because in the last eight months, offices have been locked down. In most businesses, between 10 to 30% of staff is coming to work. So tell us what has happened in the facilities management space. Uh, see, the facility management corporate side obviously has been hit very badly because of all the offices, like you said, has been closed uh, for the last uh, three, four months. You know, uh, But then uh, we had another service. We started another service like... Uh, uh, like it was said, Badipak, that, uh, you know, in any calamity, an opportunity comes up. Always. So, yeah. So we started the residential services. So that has seen a boom over the last six months, uh, which has, you know, kept our uh, business uh, going, despite the corporate facilities being shut down. So we've, we've had a spurt in the demand uh, as far as the residential services are concerned, because uh, that's equally important. Uh, and uh, also, we are also into the staffing business. So that, there was a similar thing there also because we do a lot of work with retail, retail and logistics. So there, there was again a boom. So in the end, I would say that uh, 2021 has evened out for us. Uh, not really, you know, uh, Mr. Kumar, we, Mr. Kumar, yes. that even, even despite the vaccine being on the horizon, uh, and, you know, most of the country on the cusp of being inoculated by the middle of next year, the work from home trend, which Anurag just spoke of, is, is, is another accidental innovation or something that corporates have stumbled upon and they would want to keep it to keep yeah. costs down. Yes, uh, definitely. It is, uh, you see, I don't uh, really uh, think that by mid of next year, a country like India would be able to vaccinate everybody. You know, we are a, we are the largest, one of the largest populated countries. So but six months is yeah, at least six months is too short of a time, you know, to uh, vaccinate uh, the entire population. Well, at least and uh, class, yeah, sorry, at least the metropolis will be uh, inoculated because those are the economic engines. The government is going to make sure that uh, you know your uh, uh, capital city and your financial hubs and your other. Uh, metropolitan cities will be inoculated because you know that dr does drive the economy of the country. Yeah, like Vineet, you said, uh, mentioned uh, organizations have reset their strategic priorities uh, with this COVID 19. You know, it has brought about uh, a, ch a change in the perception that uh, businesses can be run uh, remotely, also, you know, just as efficiently, uh, if not more. And shows can uh, be at home. Yeah, <laughs> except maybe some, really, some industry like media, like uh, your entertainment and all, you know, which is which uh, would require to pull in patrons uh, into the theatres for it to boom. You but, know, I, uh, I have to tell you, I was in Bombay, I was having dinner with a very close friend of mine, the pioneer in the entertainment business. And I had, I had a cup of tea just before that with another pioneer, top three uh, cinema producers in the country. And I can tell you that maybe I miss the cinema. But if I talk to young people who are 15, they don't, you know, they don't have a concept of the cinema. They're very, um, you know, happy with OTT. They see yeah. it as convenience. They see it anytime. So I'm not sure the cinemas will come back in a big way. And you yeah. know, I'm not a pessimist, but I'm just saying that we may be nostalgic about it. We may be emotional about it as we all are about old experiences. But I think there are lots of habits that we built during lockdown, which will become permanent. There are some we are doing because of compulsion, but a lot of them will have a choice and they may stay. And I also want to, the business of facilities management ha has grown and will grow in my view because safety, sanitization will become a very important driver of facilities management. Second, retail. And we, the e-commerce is growing. I can give you numbers. But the beauty is that overall retail is growing. If you looked at October, November sales, the walking into retail centers were unprecedented and a lot of people bought online and they collected offline so the retail experience is not going away because no. again in certain product categories in spite of ar vr you still have a need to touch feel the product so clearly you know i have this uh, theory and you know me i i have articulated this that the more digital grows the value of physical touch uh, grows you know so kruti your saloon um, the layer uh, will do well because while there will be a lot of people who may use the do-it-yourself economy, a lot of people are craving more than ever to go out and have social connections and interactions. Uh, that's uh, my hypothesis, but 
I'm not a futurist. I'm not an astrologer. And you know that no one can predict the future. Yeah. Really? Right. Yeah, Kriti, you know, in fact, when uh, we started this conversation, Kriti, there's a question that I had for you that, uh, you know, the influx that you see of people coming in, finally trickling, trickling in into your barber shop, uh, is there a ratio? Uh, because in a very recent report, I read that uh, men are more likely to be visiting a salon uh, during the pandemic than women. Um, what ratio? I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Okay. Uh, just tell us about the, uh, you know, the, the, the walk-in scenario in your salon. Uh, are there more women showing up? Are there more men showing up, uh, you know, to get themselves groomed? Because according to a report that I read online, men are more likely to risk their health to visit a salon than women. Okay, so uh, where to start with, we're actually a barbershop. So most of our services are only for men. We don't have a lot of women coming in. Uh, that said, um, it's uh, uh, yes, you're right when you say that because a lot of men feel like, you know, they're anyway stepping out for work. So it's all right. They can take this additional uh, risk, if you put it like that. Uh, but I've also seen a lot of like women pushing you know, um, especially like men who are working from home, they're like, no, you you absolutely need to go get this done, even if you might not feel like it. Um, so that's it. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, right. Go ahead, Anurag. Go ahead. So I was just saying that, you know, we normally take a break in the show uh, and post the break, we would like to ask you two questions to all the four panelists. One is what are your top lockdown lessons? What has changed in you as entrepreneurs in the last eight months that will help you uh, live your life better, build your businesses in a more impactful way. And second, when do you see the Indian economy coming back in full bloom? Either extrapolation from your sector or basis on your experiences that you're having as an entrepreneur. We are talking about the economy. Telltale signs have been indicated that uh, everything is going to come back to normal. A lot of industries have already reported up to 80% of businesses resuming uh, you know, during the pre-COVID era. Uh, and this is a good sign. Before we took a break, Anurag had specifically uh, you know, posted a couple of questions to be asked. Uh, Deepak, let's start with you. Uh, lockdown lessons is something that uh, we all are you know, replete with. You know, they're, they're, there are going to be perhaps uh, scores of books which are going to be written about personal, uh, uh, you know, introspection and revelation. Uh, uh, you know, what has been your lockdown lesson? Let's start with you. And uh, let's also talk about ideas uh, and, and indicators which you feel are perhaps pointing towards the economy slowly and steadily getting back on its feet. Sure. Thank you, Vinit. I'll address the first part uh, first which is about what are the lessons that I as an entrepreneur have learned during these COVID times, during these work from home times. And, and this is this has come from experience. This has come from introspection. And this has come from talking to friends and uh, people in the industry. So the first one that we have realized for our industry is that, you know, there used to be a lot of talk around onshore, offshore delivery. Now that's all off the table. Now people are talking about any shoring or home shoring. So for us, that's become mainstream. As in, we are seeing that people working from home is no less than people coming to office and working. So home shoring is going to become mainstream. It has taken the center stage and this will continue. I don't think when you know this whole COVID situation goes away, we are not going to ask our people to come to office and work. People have already started saying that they are very happy working from their smaller towns and working and nobody is complaining about their productivity, nobody is complaining about their ownership. So this is going to become mainstream and we as a business are going to take full advantage of that. Mm -hmm. In the sense that now, that's kind of maybe if you uh, will, it's a second lesson that we are now starting, we have already started to hire from cities where we don't have an office. So now we earlier we used to hire only from let's say Delhi, and uh, you know, Gurgaon, Noida, and maximum to the satellite towns. But now we're talking about hiring people from Pondicherry. We've already made made an offer. Now we have that's kind of opened up a new opportunities from acquire, for acquiring talent from anywhere in the world. So, and I think there will be businesses who will adopt this, and there will be businesses who will kind of resist it. But I'm at least in the first camp that we want to embrace it and we want to take full advantage of it. So and that's, Deepak, and Deepak uh, while there are lots of silver linings, lots of positives, tell us some of the things that are very 
disturbing to you as an entrepreneur okay anurag so to be as in very luckily as an entrepreneur you said not as a human being not as a father not as a uh, you know person living in a joint family as an entrepreneur in in the it services industry i am only seeing seeing opportunities anurag honestly i'm super excited about things that have now started becoming possible we used to earlier talk about you know having to travel to client locations to close a sale now that's no longer required everything has become more productive and uh, everything has become more concise and to the point so all the sales meetings are more productive now and the clients are not asking to come to travel to them for closing a sale so to be honest i mean that's maybe i'm uh, a little bit more bi- optimistically biased but i am not worried about many things obviously i'm worried about when people start coming to office then will it be safe and things like that but we are looking at addressing that in a very gradual manner and we have already made the announcement that people who want to continue to work from home forever they can plan around that but deepak is has this happened because of the pandemic is that what you're saying is this because of the pandemic that absolutely absolutely i mean this so, these were mind blocks so basically uh, sorry think you need a nuclear weapon to avoid a nuclear war yeah i mean that's that that's a good analogy we were never aware of the possibilities that we could you know 100% work from home massively so we are around 1500 people we never imagined that you know this kind of massive 100% work from home situation and there will be no disruptions no client escalations in fact the clients are very appreciative of the productivity and the availability and what of the, done to the salaries have the salaries gone up they maintain stay static or do you see that um, you know the pressure on salaries is eased give us a sense of how is it impacted hiring sure so uh, again anurag very very uh, you know related to the industry that we are in we were expecting that the availability of the skills of cloud skills the digital transformation skills data science will become easier as in there will be more people who will be available in the market at a let's say a relatively lesser cost but that hasn't happened it's still you know there is still a shortage of people yeah because the, the demand has gone up by a level where even if more people have got added with the need for people who understand new technologies and understand uh, the business trends uh, that power those technologies or technologies that power business trends are in demand let me go to pankaj pankaj what are your top lockdown lessons well i think uh, the the best lesson that we've had is uh, you know the vestige of vestige at a farm farm gate uh when we looked at uh, in a pandemic uh, the amount of wastage the farmer is going through and that's where the realization have come the digital transformation to this grassroots level farmer will drive their business to the next level and i think that that has started creating an impact to the sector one second while we've uh, started helping these farmers selling their produce digitally this also started enhancing their cost of produce right Uh, they they do not have to go to mandi as i said apmc as i said and all of that but one thing that has resulted is taking more uh, you know price for their produce second lesson that we found is that there is lot of attention to this particular sector where people never had given the attention to agriculture which is a root right so we all have to now give that attention to this sector provide more strength to strength to this route and transform this route that's what we call okay. and pankaj pankaj you know just to tell our viewers that cold storage pankaj you know one second storage facilities in india are the uh, one foot are very weak you asked oh, just one footnote i'm sorry anurag just one footnote before we move on uh, you know you spoke about uh, you know uh, us being food surplus india is a food surplus country right uh, and and you know just answer for our viewers how is this bill going to change that as well you're an expert in this field so uh, if you look at uh, we do not have any kind of a data table which says demand and supply right so it's more of a community uh, sowing stage that we are in today also so for an example if a one farmer says that i am putting a soya bean in 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 field the other also says that i will do the same thing if you go to nashik area there are only two crops which are very prominent right one is grapes and second is onion right but now that statistics have started changing people like us are 
telling them that look we will do a partnership grow this particular fruit or grow this particular kind of a vegetable and it will give you a very good returns after 6 months or after 9 months or after year and that has started resulting a good probably the sector dimension and ensuring that uh, the the farmers are getting more benefited from their land okay anurag i was just saying i was just building on what pankaj was saying see the lack of storage facilities in india for food grain results into a humongous waste of uh, you know grains and food items i think we need to build a very robust storage in cold chain and one of the sectors that is growing thanks to pandemic is warehousing as e-commerce grows as you know you know farm to fork becomes a reality one of the sectors that is growing hugely and is seeing huge interest from investors as well as uh, you know operators is the warehousing sector uh, kruti what are your top lockdown lessons um i think one is that uh, not stepping out a lot less uh, everything's moved to digital and uh, because everyone's already consuming so much digital content even if people aren't going to like barber shops and salons or hospitality places anymore um, you still have to try and be on the top of their head so you know when they actually do decide to step out they end up picking you so um, you know we've had to like do a lot of activity in terms of like ads and social media and such uh, uh, for that to happen um and second is I, i'm i'm sure that for most of everyone you know this is like a done and dusted thing but i came in with the assumption that uh, people want to you know interact with like bigger corporates and they want to interact with bigger businesses but uh, what i'm realizing is that actually customers want a lot more like personal um touch and uh, uh you know like that connection so uh, for us like instead of sending out all these like uh, very generic messages like you know sending out like um a heartfelt invitations or you know letting people know like what we're doing and such uh, that's uh, it increased our customer engagement by a lot so yeah that's basically been it and kruti from a price point if you're providing this experience do you see the price points or yields Uh, per customer or per walk-in, uh, being substantially higher than the other saloons. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. I think we're uh, priced very um, economically. Like we're, we're definitely we charge a little bit more, like a little bit of a premium to um, your, uh, you know, like basic salons. But uh, when you uh, when you consider like you know other really big brands like Two for Ten Hill and such, like we're very competitively um, priced. um and with the additional uh, you know like cost that we're incurring to keep you know the entire place sanitized after every single customer uh, the margins are gone have obviously gone down but we're still not you know increasing or uh, putting that on the customer so for a lot whatever customers because our price point is what it is they they believe and they trust that we'll be able to do everything that's necessary to keep them and us safe Okay, Mr. Kumar, what are your top lockdown lessons? Ah, uh, you see, uh, my top lockdown lessons is that uh, we have been able to realign our cost structures uh, over this period. We uh, we came to uh, we sharpen the productivity and uh, create fresh revenue streams. Like I told you, you know, we we started with the residential services, which is a uh, absolutely new stream. and uh, also a lot of things that uh, we we never presumed that we could do uh, through a, you know in an environment of lockdown uh, which we could do now you know so like like we could do do away with a lot of travel you know that that would cut cut cost but same product will remain same uh, and uh, our sector has one uh, fortunately been one of the uh, few which has not really had a major impact <coughs> negative impact as far as uh, the covid-19 uh, pandemic is concerned because uh, uh, segments like uh, retail and e-commerce booming uh, during the lockdown our requirement for our uh, delivery boys and all increased rather than decrease uh, during this phase and you know if i may ask what is the change in the consciousness of the people who work with you you know the frontline staff which were at the facilities the uh, you know management staff that works with you what is the change in their attitudes that you noticed 
See, uh, <clears throat> there has been no change per se in their attitude. We, we have been uh, we have been very rigorous on our training aspect. You know, training uh, because uh, most of my staff uh, are coming from a very lower strata of the society. Personal hygiene uh, is a very you know it's a subject which is uh, least on their mind. Uh, but but we have uh, because those are the people we are sending into other people's homes. So we, we we take a very very we have a very very rigorous training process, uh, and which we we ensure that they adhere to it. And uh, uh, in fact, the perception about uh, hygiene and safety has in fact undergone a sea change over this last six months, seven months. Uh, okay, well, you know, let me bring in Pankaj again. Pankaj, with the numbers you see on your platform numbers you see for the agriculture sector i know over the last 20 years the contribution of the agriculture sector to the gdp went down but we are hoping if we have to get on to 8 10% growth hopefully agriculture has to play a bigger role both in terms of branding of our products as well as the quality of our product so give us a sense of when do you see the economy coming back in full bloom 6 months 12 months or 18 months what's your sense based on your experiences I think I think it will take minimum to 12 months to uh, it will go up to a 24 months. Uh, as I said, Anurag, uh, uh, you know, the from a sowing to harvest, it's a it's a pattern of a nine months, right? And we can't expect uh, all the necessary actions to be done in a like let's say six months or a seven months time. Wow. Second, the the farm bill which has been passed by the government, which is to go to root will take another year's time because people have yet not realized the benefits of it. So from my perspective, I think it will take a 12 months to 24 months time. Okay. Uh, Kruti said, what is your sense talking to other entrepreneurs, your own sense when you plan your business? Uh, do you see the next month uh, kind of starting a revival or see a little long haul for revival of the economy? Yeah, I think it's going to take a little longer than um, it let me take like six to eight months before, you know, people are a little more comfortable with um, stepping out and uh, the vaccine coming in might definitely help a little, but not as much, as, especially not for affluent communities, uh, because I imagine that, um, uh, you know, like there are, there are uh, people who can um, afford to work from home and, you know, have that um, extra cushion where they can po possibly like take a break uh, before they absolutely have to go out and, you know, earn uh, to be able to make their livelihood. So for those communities, especially like I think that everyone's still going to take a step back and, you know, be absolutely certain before they start stepping out. Do you think that the emphasis on hygiene and sanitization is uh, going to be, you know, uh, extremely vociferous now that we have uh, survived through a pandemic? Um, uh, yes, I, I, I think it is although um it's funny because a few of my customers who've already you know uh, had covid and have recovered from it, uh, now are a lot more relaxed in the sense that you know uh, they'll ask for example some of my staff members to not wear a shield they're like no no, no it's fine you don't have to do you know like extra things you can just um be normal around me that kind of stuff which we don't do because well we don't have we haven't had COVID yet so we don't want to like risk it uh, they have, but they, they, they feel they have uh, the antibodies now you know they've received mm -hmm. the first booster shot I, perhaps perhaps that gives them uh, some sort of a confidence uh, right absolutely Anurag you know uh, we need um, I have full confidence in the capabilities of Indian vaccine makers but you know there are still questions about the efficacy <clears throat> you know, I think uh, there are questions and they may get addressed as time moves. But I think um, uh, one, to be able to move fast, to be able to, uh, you know, vaccinate the more vulnerable sections, frontline, whether it's doctors or people who work in the frontline, uh, may take time. And there are legitimate questions about the efficacy. I mean, I think everyone wants comfort. I mean, there are questions about uh, how many shots, the pricing, so on and so forth. And I think the government has a plan which it hasn't shared, but knowing the way this government works, I'm sure they have a very detailed plan. And you know, again, as I've said before, I think you have to compliment the government for making sure it has done a commendable job in making sure that food reach uh, the homes of uh, most Indians. There were no food rights. There is no major social unrest. So while, um, you know, 
there are a lot of areas, especially in the economy, that the government is working to make sure that uh, it provides an impetus at the right time. I think the government has to be complemented on what it has achieved in the last eight months in keeping the social fabric together by uh, looking after the you know bottom of the pyramid and the middle value of India. So I think uh, we have to recognize that, but only time will tell. Um, whether the fear factor goes away or not. And Kruti, do you see uh, your stores being pan India? Do you see uh, your chain as a chain? You know, right now it's a standalone star. Uh, but and do you see a franchising model or uh, would it be company owned stones? Um, I, I mean, that's that was the plan when we started out. This was this particular one is for proof of concept, and if it does well, um, if you know customers um, are attracted to the value proposition, uh, to our value proposition, then we want to open more. But um, I think as of now, I don't think we'll be going down the franchisee route. Uh, it will mostly be company-owned stores. Okay. Uh, last but not the least, let's ask Deepak. Deepak, when do you see the economy coming back in full bloom? Six months. 12 months, 18 months. I know you have been very optimistic. Your business has seen growth. IT and digital transformation are really uh, what the CEOs, promoters are spending time. It's no longer left to a CIO, CTO, or a CDO. Yep. Uh, tell us, uh, what's your outlook for the economy? Sure, Anurag. I think it's a personal reality-based uh, optimism. So I, I think that um, it could take six to 12 months and again not backed by data or hard facts but i think it's kind of very very dependent on how fast are we able to roll out the vaccine and as soon as that starts people will start raising their hopes and all the activity will come back to normal so i think anywhere between six to 12 months would be my guess okay uh, mr kumar you know you are in a sector that is totally dependent on offices opening i know you started residential uh, but the offices have a large span, large numbers, large spaces, and large people. Do you see that, you know, offices are like Kruti has said, you know, going to a saloon or a barber shop is not just about getting an errand and it's an experience. Similarly, for a lot of people to go to an office is an outing. It is about social interaction with their colleagues. Office spaces will also kind of reinvent themselves. So do you see your business and facility management coming back in a big way next year, Mr. Kumar? Definitely, definitely. Because uh, what we have now in, uh, seen the, since the offices have uh, started, restarted, you know, people, because everything cannot be done work from home. So you have to open an office and have certain elements and uh, with the reduced workforce also, uh, the impact or the requirement or the need or demand for sanitized workplace has increased. And uh, that is where uh, we have recently tied up with an Australian company to bring solutions which will which will have a long-lasting impact of the sanitization. Like, you know, our process would, uh, uh, what we have now advocating and uh, implementing it at client sites is uh, 28 days of uh, effective uh, sanitized environment. You know, that's up to 28 days of guaranteed uh, sanitized environment. So, in fact, uh, we, we, we see a lot of uh, potential growth. So, as far as... Uh, uh, this business is concerned of facility management. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I wish you luck in your endeavors. And I can only say uh, that the future will be bright as long as we can be agile, we can be resilient, and we can be open to change and, you know, embrace it faster than the change embraces us. So I think as long as in Indian entrepreneurs have these qualities and because of the Prime Minister's clarion call of being Atnirbar, uh, it has raised the consciousness and the ambition of Indian entrepreneurs. I'm sure uh, we'll be able to build on the opportunities that 2020 has created, even in the pandemic, and hopefully sense new opportunities in 2021. Anurag, you know, we, we, we just have a couple of minutes. In fact, we've heard from everyone about their lockdown lessons. I want to know from you, what have been your lockdown lessons? And, uh, you know, since the time we started doing this show, uh, you know, we've heard a multitude of opinions as to when the economy is going to be revived. Some people have gone on to say three months. We've already crossed that and two, three years. Uh, what's What's been your favorite lockdown lesson? And has there been any skill that you have mastered in, uh, you know, the extra time that you've had? Okay, um, we need, uh, I'll give you a very boring answer. I am a guy who only works, works and works. 
Okay, <laughs> so clearly I have done more work and work and work, and I don't see my work as work. You know, my book is finally coming out in 2021. It's called Eight Days a Week. So I actually have fun eight days a week. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I do. But I can tell you on a serious note, uh, you know, uh, life is about focus. I think lockdown has brought focus. Uh, lockdown has brought intensity. And one realization, you know, I'm a very social person. I like to meet people, um, and I continue to do that. Of course, with my mask and you know social distancing and being responsible. But the fact is that you know, time is more important than money. We always knew it. I think I value time even more than I ever did. Uh, second is you know while I enjoy work, all that life is about relationships. Um, you know, the pandemic. pandemic was a great time to renew relationships to strengthen relationships to rediscover relationships whether these were business relationships personal relationships so i think uh, these are my two top lockdown lessons one time is bigger than money and second uh, relationships are the elixir of life so discover them renew them whether it's business i told my teams in both my organizations they don't worry about business right now just build stronger relationships in a very genuine way if you do that automatically business will get built so i think these are my lessons and i can only say that consistency matters focus matters and if you really believe that you can build something you will be able to build it sky is the limit as deepak rightly said the beauty about digital is it helps you do a scale that you may not have imagined pre covid whether it's the virtual events we would get 300 to 500 people physically in our event today in some of our events we got 8000 people on a single webinar 8000 people just on the zoom call and uh, another 7000 on uh, social media so 15000 people we wouldn't get 15000 people in an event so i think digital allows scalability we have to imagine whatever we do in a purely digital first mobile first and millennial first environment if we don't you know we lose out on the opportunity uh, that india presents absolutely anurag uh, and on that uh, philosophical and sapient note we're going to call it a day thank you everyone for being a part of this wonderful show and uh, hopefully uh, the next time we meet we are uh, talking about uh, an economy which has already recovered thank you so much for being thank you here. thanks thank, thank you vinith thank, thank you anurag for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon